So yeah, this is the Ichimoku trend checklist that I've created uh, a while ago and it's been actually uh, here for a couple of days now. I created this a couple of days ago and uh, I am actually explaining the market based on this checklist. And this is based on Ichimoku analysis. Uh, when it comes to taking trades, I look at different uh, uh, things, instruments, but uh, basically when you capture the trend, Ichimoku is very helpful. And I know that uh, most of you are interested in Ichimoku Kinko Hyo, so that's why I just created this checklist so that uh, you know what, which way to follow, what to, what to do, what to follow to capture the trend, whether it's on a trend or not. So, um, you know, you can take responsibility of yours, right? I'm not here to take responsibility of your money. So, and yeah, everybody should be independent and everybody should take your own risk and the responsibility, right? The trend is very important because of these points, right? To identify the trading edges. Uh, when you know the trend, where it starts, then you will easily find the trading edge to buy or sell. But if you don't know the trend, where the trend is, then you cannot really uh, look for the trading edge, right? What I mean by trading edge is that uh, the place where the stop loss can be minimized and the profit can be maximized. That's what I call the trading edge. And the possibility for the uh, price to be going upwards or downwards is going to be relatively higher. And that is a trading edge. Because uh, when you think about it, uh, the forex market or forex trading is all about probabilities right so rather than playing like 50 50 chance of game you want to play like 60 40 game right 60 win uh, 40 loss game so yeah to identify the trading edge that's very important because overall um, this is the way you can accumulate keep uh, extending and accumulating the profit and asset as as much as possible and also to capture the trend it can be time efficient so this is another important point to take a tra take trades according to the trend because um, you know you can spend hours or days to look at the market and analyze the chart but if it doesn't move anywhere right it's not really time efficient right uh, the days or hours that you took to analyze analyze the chart is not really time efficient right it doesn't make you any money right at all afterwards but Ideally, you only look at the chart for like 5 or 15 minutes or 30 minutes at most and you take a buy. Then afterwards, after you close the PC and it, it keeps extending towards upside. And you do other things like reading books or watching movies or having fun with your friends while you're making money over time. But it only took like 30 minutes of your time and you're making like lots of money, right? Lots of profit. And that's the time efficiency. In forex market or stock market or whatever market it is, whether it's, uh, wherever you invest money, right, uh, time is very important because you can, you can only make money when you are correct and when you are right, right? That means, um, you know, and you don't get paid depending on the hours you look at the market, right? Depending on days you look at the market. Usually uh, in a, ordinary job right you get paid according to how many hours you work or how many um, you know how many tasks you do depending on the task or depending on the hours you get paid that's a that's the norm in this community right in this society but uh, forex market or uh, investment is and that's very painful so time efficiency is the key to success in forex trading in terms of money and also psychology and that's why uh, trend capture is very important to be time efficient in investment, right? And also you have a better risk to reward ratio, right? When you take trades according to the trend, then your risk is going to be minimized and your reward can be extended, right? A lot. And you can easily find those spots, um, you know, as you take trades by the trend, right? And also you can be confident on entries because basically when it's on the trend, when it's going up, wherever you buy, you make profit, right? Depending on uh, the circumstances, right? Wherever you buy, you can be, you can run profit. Or when it's going down, wherever you sell, you can make profit, right? Sometimes it goes backwards, but eventually it keeps going downwards, upwards, right? So that's the beauty of capturing a trend because you can be confident 
on your trades too. And also, uh, this is another important point, but to know how far the trend will extend. Sometimes, right, when the market is in the range, uh, you know it's in, it's in the range, so the profit is limited, right? Usually, uh, when it goes upwards within the range, uh, sometimes, right, or usually, right, the price, uh, you know, is going to be rejected by the resistance line and it keep, keeps going downwards. So, in the range, uh, the take profit target is limited, but when it's in the trend, then basically it keeps extending towards that way, right, as much as possible. And this is another good point to follow the trend. And also finally, you can go with the flow. This is, uh, you know, my saying, but, um, you know, you can go with the flow and you can be right. You can make profit, basically, because, you know, sometimes um, you go against the wind and it, it needs more power, more energy to actually face, you know, to go towards that way when the wind is coming, right, uh, from, from in front of you. But when the wind is actually from, uh, from the back of yourself, then without, you know, taking much power or energy, you can actually go forward. So it's, it's just like, like uh, you know, riding on the bicycle, riding on the boat, right? Um, you can go with the flow and with less energy, you make uh, the most from the market. And that's another beauty of this uh, uh, trend analysis. And that's why capturing a trend is very important. And whether the market that you're looking at is on the trend or not is uh, very important and right, crucial to, to take trades every time. So based on this trend analysis, so this is actually to take to, to capture the trend. And this checklist is not really to capture the range, okay? So you look at these time frame, different time frames, and sometimes the daily chart goes up, sometimes 4-hour chart goes down, sometimes wanna go up, and you might mess up, right? Okay, so which way should I take trades? And to avoid that confusion, I created this page, right? I divided these time frames into three categories. So first, there is a big time frame as a major trend. So always follow the major trend is the key here, right? Always follow the major trend. Because whenever it's going up, Right, no matter in one hour or 15 minute chart, no matter it's going down, uh, sooner or later it should go up because major trend is going up. That's why I put this uh, first in this uh, first column. Always make sure to uh, be able to capture the major trend first, and depending on this, uh, you look at the lower time frames. In major trend, I take daily chart and four hour chart. So you can take either, right? Either daily chart or four hour chart. And if one of these are pointing down or up, then you can go to lower time frames for more confirmations. So yeah, it's impossible for all these time frames to point all the way upwards or downwards. And it's impossible. So yeah, first you can take either daily or four hour chart. You look at these either. Uh, one of these uh, time frames and you when you find it's downtrend uptrend then go to the lower time frames and you see either one hour or 30 minute chart when you see either these time frames with either one of these time frames are pointing up then go to even lower time frames to take trace and that's why I colored it red yellow and green and this is actually like a traffic light in this one, right, when you see the major trend to be like horizontal range, then stay away from that chart. If you get the green sign on this major trend, then move on to the yellow, right, uh, middle time frame confirmation to confirm whether the major trend is persistent or not. And then finally, when you find, when you confirm uh, the major trend to be persistent, then you go lower time frames, like 15 or 5, to take entry timing, okay? And the logic of this major trend and confirmation is basically the same. You look at the Ichimoku Kinko Hyo, the Kumo, right? You look at the Kumo and also Kijun Sen, and you confirm whether these time frames are in the trend or not. And when the when the currency pair pass these two tests, then you go down to 15 or 5 minute chart and try to capture where to take buy or sell in these raw time frames. All right, so and uh, let's start from this uh, bigger time frame analysis here, right? When you see, so first, you st start here, right? So first, you look at the Kumo. You look at the Kumo and whether it's moving up or down. And when you see Kumo, 
right? Make sure to check these three points at least, right? So first, the angle of the kumo, and second, the length of the kumo, and finally, you look at the thickness of the kumo, whether it's thick enough or not. Okay, so let me take a real chart example and see how you can use it, right? Because there are new members here, so I am explaining this uh, step by step here. So this is the uh, this is uh, um, euro pound, and let's take a look at the daily chart first, right? Because um, first, right, just a reminder: as a major trend, you look at the daily chart or four-hour chart, right? You look at the daily chart or four-hour chart. Let's take a look at the daily chart first, and when you look at the daily chart first, you look at the kumo, right? And you look at the angle of the kumo and the length of the kumo, right here, so that you can see the kumo at the same time along with this uh, checklist okay so first what you can look at is a kumo whether it's moving up or down and right now the angle here is moving up right this is the up kumo so it's good right it's and also you look at the length you look at the angle and the length and the thickness of the kumo and when you look at the angle this is okay this is a great uptrend angle so it's okay and the length is a relatively longer here so length is okay but when you look at the thickness of the kumo uh, this is relatively thin right this is relatively thin so that means that volatility is quite strong right it's quite strong so the price might be retracing backwards anytime soon when you see the thin kumo like this moving up or down that means that there might be retracing backwards so in terms of the thickness in this case uh, this is not really so reliable so this is a daily chart so let's take a look at the 4 hour chart just in case which one of the kumo is uh, more reliable right so let's take a look at the 4 and yeah this is a 4 hour kumo and this one is more reliable because it's been going up right now yeah I see that uh, the length is great, great right the angle is going up the length is long and also thickness is relatively more thicker than a daily chart, right? So instead of looking at a daily chart, you can take this 4-hour chart to confirm this uptrend as a bigger time frame, right? So after confirming these points, you look at the Senko Span B of the Kumo. So when the Kumo is moving up, Senko Span B is the lower part of the Kumo. And you look at the angle of this Senko Span B and you find it's horizontal. In this case, Senko Span B right here is horizontal. This is not the confirmation for the uptrend. So there are more checklists here. So when Senko Span B is flat, look at Senko Span A, whether it's moving up in this case also. Right? So Senko Span A is the upper part of this Kumo, up Kumo in this case. And when you look at this single span A, it's moving up, right? It's moving up. So it's a great sign that it's going up, right? This is uptrend. When single span B is moving up, then, then it's okay. You can take this single span B. But uh, sometimes single span B goes flat. And in that case, you look at this single span A and see if this is pointing upwards in this case. And yeah, this is pointing upwards, so this is good. So we, it's yes, right? Single span A is moving up, yes. And then you move on to the third question. All right, so is Kijun Sen going up in this case? So Kijun Sen is the green line in this case, right? And I see it's going up right now. So Kijun Sen is moving up too. These are all yes, right? Uh, Kumo is moving up, yes. And single span B flat, but single span A is moving up, yes. And Kijun Sen is moving up, yes. So this is a confirmation that this major trend in 4 hour chart is now uptrend. And we move on to the middle time frame. So you can put this uh, 4 hour chart uptrend. You can just take memo here up and you move down to either 1 hour or 30 minute time frame and look for exactly the same same condition by looking at the Kumo and Kijun Sen, right? So here is the uh, the middle time frame confirmation checklist okay so you get again start here basically we do the same right we basically we check out the kumo the angle length and thickness of it so let's check out uh, the one hour first all right so in this one hour chart uh, the kumo is long enough right it's long it's going up beautifully and senko span b is moving up right so this is a great uptrend so when you see senko span b is up then look at the Kijun Sen, 
right? Look at the Kijun Sen. And right now, looks like it's horizontal. Kijun Sen is horizontal. So in this case, uh, we cannot confirm that in this one hour chart, this is uptrend. So what we have to do is we have to wait for this Kijun Sen to point upwards to look for the next buy chance. Right now, Kijun Sen is flat. So we cannot take this uh, one hour to be uptrend. All right, so let's take a look at the 30 minute chart. Okay, so in this 30 minute chart, right? First, look at the Kumo, right? Look at the Kumo, whether it's moving up or down and also check angle, length, and thickness of the Kumo. And in this case, Kumo is long, right? Moving up long, and it's been beautifully uptrend, and uh, thickness is pretty thick here. So this is a beautiful up Kumo. So, and then you look at the Senko Span B. And right now, Senko Span B is flat. So in this case, you look at the Senko Span A, right? And it should be going up to confirm the uptrend. And uh, let's take a look at it right now, right? Uh, Senko Span A currently is moving down this way. In this 30 minute chart too, uh, Senko Span is moving down. So without going to Kijun Sen, this is not the buying chance, right? This is not the uptrend. We cannot confirm the uptrend in this middle time frame, right? So we better, we better wait for this Senko Span A to move up this way or a Kijun Sen to move up this way to look for the buy chance by going to the lower time frames. But right now, again, Senko Span A is going backwards, like retracing. So we cannot look for the buy chance, right? Although the price looks to be uptrend, right? If uh, Senko Span A is retracing like this way, that means that the market is consolidating right now. So in short term, there is no trend in the market. Market is consolidating. So there's no direction in the market, right? Uh, the market might go upwards, but it might go downwards. And we never know which way the market is gonna go. So that's why we have to wait for the next uptrend confirmation. So again, in the one hour chart, right? Uh, Senko Span A is moving up. And uh, this, is, this one looks horizontal, but uh, Senko Span B is moving up. But uh, Kijun Sen is horizontal, right? So that means that the market is retracing, uh, sorry, uh, retracing and consolidating right now. So we better wait for this Kijun Sen to move up or Senko Span A to move up to take a buy next time. Or you look at the 30 minute chart and wait for this Senko Span A to move up or Kijun Sen to move up to take a buy. All right, so, but uh, in this four hour chart, this is still beautiful uptrend, so you can uh, place this uh, currency pair as a checklist and you can look for the buy chance next time by looking at a 30 minute chart or one hour chart. All right, so this is something that we can know from this middle time frame to confirm whether this uptrend is persistent or not. And right now, as you can see, it's been consolidating, so it's not persistent yet, right, anymore. And that's why we have to wait, right? This is where you have to be patient and we have to wait uh, to look for buy. And uh, just in case, right, let's say, let's say in 30 minute chart, you see it's uptrend, like Kijun Sen moving up, and you see Senko Span A is moving up too. And let's assume that uh, you find this uh, 30 minute chart to be uptrend. Then in that case, you go down to lower time frame, even lower time frames like, uh, yeah, this uh, 15 or five for to capture the entry timing. For uh, this is a checklist for the entry timing, and these are the major instruments that I usually use to take trades. So, yeah, there are many many things here, but um, yeah, these are pretty basics, right? Uh, because uh, when you look at the uh, kumo ichimoku, right, you look at the kumo direction again, and also you look at either sanyaku koten or gyakuten signal is happening on the market. And also, you see whether Chikou Span is breaking the recent high or low, up or downwards. And also, you see uh, whether the market has been uh, supported or resisted by Tenkan Sen or Kijun Sen. So that's something that you can look at by using Ichimoku here. And also, you look at the Bollinger Bands and whether it's been squeezing or not. Right? When it's squeezed, then uh, the price is going to be is actually getting ready for the next move. And most likely it's gonna break out towards the direction of the major trend. So 
Yeah, Bollinger Band squeeze is very important point to look at when it comes to taking trades and also whether the price has been band walking, right? Band walking is like when the price is going along with the deviation too, up or downwards. That shows the strong uh, market momentum towards that way. So you can take trades towards that way. And also lines, right? These are pretty basics too, but you can look at the support or resistance line. Or you look at the fractal and you look at the trend line and you look, you look at the counter trend line to capture the uh, line breakout to take trades or to look for the support or resistance by the lines uh, to take trades according to the direction of the major trend. And also you look at the price action, right? Uh, thrust up or down and you look at the wave patterns and pin bar if there's any pin bars appearing on or not. And also double top or head and shoulders. You can check all these price actions to capture the next potential buy or sell chance. Yeah, uh, right now in this 30 minute chart, it's been horizontal. So even if we look at the lower time frames, it's in a range. So you cannot really take these strategies by looking at lower time frames. But uh, when you see either 30 or one hour is going up, then you can go down to 15 or five to look for the buying edges. So yeah, and that's the whole picture of the uh, how do you how you can capture the trend so yeah just by looking at the 15 minute chart briefly yeah in this case right uh, it's been consolidating right so but overall right in bigger time frame this is uptrend right in the biggest time frame this is uptrend in four hour chart so we have to wait for the confirmation in middle time frame but let's say it's moving up then uh, in this case, I would draw a horizon, uh, horizontal line like this way, support line, because it's been supported a couple of times here. And now the price has been coming all the way down here. So I can expect the price to be uh, going upwards this way. So I would buy here. And the stop loss is going to be the recent low, which is here. And in this case, the risk I will be taking is, on, is going to be only this much. Right, so it's it's going to be, um, yeah, about like 28 pips, 27 or 8 pips, and I expect the price to be breaking this recent high upwards this way, along with the uh, the major trend in bigger time frame or middle time frames. All right, so this is one way that you can take trades by buy, or you look for look at the uh, trend line. You can draw a trend line like this way in this case because uh, the price has been supported by the trend line a couple of times here and now looks like it's been touching on this trend line so you can expect the price to be supported by this trend line and keeps going upwards this way so this will be a great buy chance right so in this case you place a stop loss slightly below the recent low which is again at this level and you can expect the price to be breaking the recent high, even upwards. Right uh, right now, I don't see any uh, up uh, uptrend confirmations in a uh, one hour or 30 minute time frame, so I won't take buy here. But uh, if they were pointing upwards, then I will. This is exactly a great buying chance right now. I will take buy. I will. I will be taking buy right now. If I find a. Uh, uptrend confirmation in the middle time frames. Yeah, so this is a great uh, timing, right? Uh, there's a support line again, right? And also there's a trend line and price looks to be going upwards this way. So this is a great buy chance, right? However, uh, yeah, so you can actually take any uh, strategies that you are using right now to take trades, to take buy or sell along with this checklist so that uh, you can combine uh, it with your own strategy and you can actually take trades that way. Yeah, sometimes I take Fibonacci retracement to look for the potential retracement point, right? Uh, from this recent low, uh, I take the Fibonacci retracement like this way. And yeah, this is like 50% uh, 50 retracement level and it matches with this support line here so if the price gets closer and closer to this uh, 
50% retracement, then I, I will be buying it from here. So yeah, Fibonacci retracement is another thing that you can use to take trades. Yeah, and also you can add the time cycles or a wave and price theories into here to take trades. Yeah, and also I use stochastics, stochastics uh, and Bollinger Bands here, squeeze. So yeah, and Bollinger Bands is also squeezing right now, right? When you look at the Bollinger Bands right now, it's squeezing. So this is uptrend, right? Basically, this is uptrend. So whenever you see Bollinger Band squeeze, right? Whenever it squeeze, it breaks upwards, right? Whenever you see Bollinger Band squeeze, this is overall uptrend. So whenever it squeeze, it should break upwards in this case, right? You can actually look back and whenever you see Bollinger Band squeeze, like squeeze is like here, right? When you see the squeeze like this way, then it should break upwards well this is uh, this wasn't quite a squeeze but uh, this one was a squeeze here so you can take uh, this Bollinger Band squeeze and whenever you see the Bollinger Band has been squeezing then uh, most likely it's charging right the market is charging its energy for the next breakout and the direction where it's breaking out is most likely upwards because in major trend it's up uptrend right so whenever the market charges its energy it breaks upwards right so right now the market is charging its energy and that's why Bollinger Band has been squeezing right now so when it squeezes enough I think this is still too wide but when it squeezes enough more then it might break even upwards is the view right now so this is one way this is one way to use Bollinger Bands uh, to take trades by focusing on this squeeze. So when you happen to see 15 or 5 minute chart and when you happen to see the Bollinger Bands has been squeezing then that would be a great entry timing to take uh, buy or sell according to the major trend direction. Okay, so yeah, that's that's a bigger uh, big picture of uh, how I've created this uh, trend checklist but everything, right, everything is based on this reason, these reasons. Right by analyzing the chart this way, you can identify the trading edges because you take you take positions with lower time frames, so the stop loss can be minimized. Right, stop loss can be tighter than placing uh, in bigger time frames, but basically you are following the major trend, so the probability of going upwards is relatively higher in this case. So you you can look for these trading edges, and also you can be time efficient because once you once you capture the buying edge and once you place a buy somewhere here and you place a stop loss here then you just close the PC and go out have fun and afterwards when you come back the price might be breaking the recent high upwards right the probability of the price to be breaking upwards relatively higher in this case than going into the range so yeah, and even if you get the stop loss, right, this is still, t this is very tight, this is relatively tighter. So next time you can look for another buy chance and you get the stop loss tighter and you can expect the price to be breaking upwards next time. Um, yeah, looking for this kind of uh, setup is very important, whatever uh, currency pairs or commodity or stocks you're looking at, right? The market should be in a trend in bigger time frame and also middle time frames, right? So you get the better risk to reward ratio, you can be confident in entries, and also you know how far the trend will extend, and also you are actually going with the flow. So actually the error is coming from the bottom, right? In this case, the error is coming from the bottom, and that's why the price has been pushed back, pushed upwards, right? So this is what I mean by going with the flow. So in this case, you are going, going with the flow of this uptrend. So basically, wherever you buy, right? Even if you buy here, even if you buy here, even if you buy here, buy here, uh, wherever you buy, you can be profitable still because you're actually going with the flow. And that's why the trend analysis is very important in this case. So again, right, this is available for a download and it's free, of course, so you can come to the uh, 
the link on the description below and feel free to download it and use it and I will be uh, keep analyzing the chart this way uh, by using this trend Ichimoku trend checklist and I will give you uh, which pair is likely to take trades, which one is in a trend, which one is horizontal range, things like that. All right, and finally, when you download it, um, I just created some uh, list of my YouTube playlist. So these are the hyperlinks. So you can click on these links and I have a list of YouTube playlist on this page. So you can feel free to enjoy my uh, past content on YouTube. Uh, I, I've got the basic uh, trading techniques in Ichimoku and moving average, price action, and chart reading, other chart reading techniques. And also I have uh, some mental and money management techniques in video. And also I have other videos like live archives and also my second channel. So you can just enjoy my contents here whenever you have time. And also the next page I have... Uh, so yeah, this is a rough, rough sketch of... Uh, of this uh, Ichimoku uh, trend check checklist okay so yeah and uh, the reason why I created this one is because I want you to be able to capture the trend and this is the best way to actually keep trading in the market and this is actually what I've actually discovered and this is my original checklist which you cannot find anywhere so but I think this is very powerful and uh, once I once I for start to focus on trend analysis and trend uh, entries uh, you know my my winning rate and also my PF profit factor is uh, was going to be uh, actually uh, getting much much better and that's why I wanted to do the same and you know capture the trend and be able to be profitable and run profit over time and uh, yeah and also if you if you're free you know if you have any friends or somebody who is interested in trading but uh, doesn't have any profit yet uh, you can all feel free to share this uh, PDF to anybody so that uh, they can also take the take advantage of this uh, PDF and you know uh, win together so yeah it's free so you can feel free to share this uh, PDF to anyone, basically. Yeah, so this is the version 1, so I might be revising it uh, over time. But uh, I think this is a good start point to analyze the market this way. So that you know what you're doing, and you know why you lost, and you know why you won. And that's a very important thing about uh, Forex. And also, you can be patient by using this checklist, because you know where the trend starts, where it ends, right? So um, until then, all you can do is to wait, right? To wait for the next trend to take trace. So yeah, I will be keep uh, explaining about this checklist. Uh, I will be keep uh, you know sharing my thoughts and ideas uh, about the forex market based on this checklist. So you can stay tuned for that. All right. So stay gold. All right. <laughs>